With uh, Brad Nofsinger in the Richard Petty Driver Search Program. Brad, you've driven all different kinds of uh, venues across the country. Uh, what is so special about the uh, the Rich Bay Driver Search Program to give well, drivers a chance? The, the program here is a lot different. It's it's more than just a search. It's mm -hmm. a program to coach young drivers how to race. Uh, the coaches that we have are guys like Marcus Ambrose, Randy LaJoy, uh, Frank Kimmel. We have a, a host of other drivers that got past championships behind them as well. The, the people that run the program, as far as uh, the celebrities, you know, Richard Petty's there helping out. So it's a coaching tool more than it's a, a search at the moment. Okay. It just happens that we have a top driver at the end of the deal and we we give him a ride in the car at an ARCA race. So it, we're, we're hoping that they get an education out of it before they get the, the top of that award. When you look at the program, what's the process of, of taking uh, someone who's applying to, to try and run the program to get it down to the 12th and test the people that'll get to run? I do all the application interviews, and on the interviews, if they don't have enough experience, I try and let them understand more of what the training's all about. So if they still want to do it, you know, I'll recommend it, but we change the training a little bit around for them. Uh, we haven't had that in, in the cases so far. So far, we've been working on training young racers that have some substantial backgrounds, bringing them up through and, and helping them with their careers as well as giving them an opportunity to win a chance to drive this car. What are the things that you're looking for in a driver? Because there's a lot of people that can, they can set a fast lap in time trials or win, or win a couple of races in the country, but there's always that little something that makes them stand out from, from someone else. What, uh, we're looking what are those for keys? We're looking for consistency. You know, someone that goes out there level-headed, really smart, saves the tires, keeps the car underneath them. Uh, we're looking for a driver that is aggressive, but we can slow him down. We're looking for one that listens. Uh, you, you've got spotters, you've got crew chiefs, you've got a lot of communication going on. One that accepts the communication really well, that's what we're looking for. When you look at the talent level that's coming in now to racing, it, where they have a lot of experience at such a young age, is, is, that, is that something that I mean, it's a big transition from what it, what it's traditionally been, where you start out at, say, 16, 17, 18 years old and work your way up from your local short track, but by this point, they've already maybe are running this car by the time they're 18 years old. You know? that, that's what's scary sometimes. You know, you've got some drivers that are under the age of 16 years old, and they haven't really matured yet. They're being pushed by fathers or sponsors or driven by guys that have worked with them since they were four or five years old. And some of them, they do have the talent. There's a lot of young drivers out there that do get it, and they act a lot older than what they really are. But the, the percentage rate is really, really small. So when it comes to going through our program and, and we figure out within the first three or four days how strong they're going to be, they pretty much rise to the top. The ones that have the talent, they'll rise right to the top. And it, we don't vote on who wins this program. It's all done by scoring. It's all done by lap times, consistency. And ability to drive the car. It's all done by uh, a, a system similar to Pi, which is a Trevinci system. And when we're done with the program, they, they, they've they proved to us that they belong on top. And I believe you also take them to different tracks with different kinds of cars, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, uh, the first day we actually run them in stock cars and go-karts on the first day. Go-karts more of an endurance test, 45 minutes to the counterclockwise around a racetrack and then we turn them around and run them clockwise around the racetrack 45 minutes to find out how strong they are, what their endurance levels are like, how consistent they stay. Uh, we do reaction time modules, uh, car control pieces in the stock car, as well as a vibration type test to see if they notice when a spark plug wire is off, uh, whether it's got a vibration from the front or the back of the car. Uh, the second day we moved to the midgets and the stock cars, two different circuits, Concord Speedway. We run their quarter mile with the midgets, we run their half mile with the stock cars. Third day we go to the road course and Marcus Ambrose heads that up and he's, he's one heck of a shoe. And he coaches them around the road course in Vipers in the morning, Dodge Vipers. And then uh, in the afternoon we run them in a full blown cup car at the end of the day. And the final day we, we do a series of tests, marketing tests. A uh, mile and a half test, a half a half hour test where they get to adjust on the car themselves. And uh, the last driver that ran for us ran over 185 miles an hour at Charlotte in one of our cars. So it was a pretty outstanding four day drive. And do you think that even if a contestant doesn't 
get the chance to, to be the top driver, you're giving them a great education because when you're looking at a top level team trying to bring a driver to, to, to work in their truck team or whatever the case might be, they need someone who's the whole package. They don't just need a quick qualifier, they need someone who's marketable, they need, they need a lot of skills beyond just behind the wheel. Well, that, that's part of our program. The fourth day they go through a marketing program with, with a lot of celebrities. Uh, Mike, Mike Bartelli runs that program and in that program he's designed a program where they got to do a commercial, they, they actually do interviews, they do a press conference and it, it really molds them a little bit but gives them an education on what they're going to do. We've run 31 people, 31 kids through the program, men and women. And at the end of the program, I haven't had one that's been dissatisfied. They've all learned a, a tremendous amount. They've come back to their own racing careers. We've actually hired several of them that work for us as trainers on our, on our program. You know, sponsorship dollars goes a long way, but they're learning and they're, they're able to stay in race cars with our program until they find that sponsorship or that, that lucky little bit of money that they need. Do you think that that's the key thing is that sponsorship money is such a critical thing these days and and sometimes the talented driver doesn't get the opportunity to move up and, and you kind of help them with that? We see that a lot. You know, there's a lot of talented drivers sitting idle right now and sponsorship dollars had a, a main role in why they didn't make it to the top. But the marketing end of it had a, a prime role in why they didn't make it to the top as well. Uh, if you're marketable, you can go a long ways because there's a lot of guys out there that might not have the talent they should have, but when you see them on TV doing the commercials and stuff they do, they're outstanding. So the marketing, that plays a big role in it. Uh, driving ability plays a big role, but the main thing is the money to run behind it. And uh, you get the chance to work with Dylan Moltz, of course, uh, Stafford Speedway regular. Um, I'm not sure if you get the chance to work with him yourself, but what, what was, what was the, the dri uh, driver, Rich Pay driver search, uh, what was their impression of him? Uh, well, actually, I got to work with Dylan really closely. Uh, we actually roomed at the Pocono race together. He uh, he drove the car there, I crew chief the car. Did a very respectable job for the first time ever going around that racetrack there. I was very impressed. I wish we could have ran him in one more race at Pocono. If we would have got two shots at that race, it would have been a different outcome. And, uh, looking at your career, were you someone who's focused on driving race cars and, and winning races? How does it feel to be in this different role, where you're where you're more of a, a leadership, a coaching role to, to upcoming drivers? It, it's tough at times. Uh, I enjoy driving a race car more than anything in the world. It allows me to stay in a race car. I own my own race team. Uh, we provide. Uh, race cars for drivers that are at a lower scale, you know, midgets and sprint cars and stuff like that. But it, it is difficult at times to watch somebody else drive your race cars and go around the track. Uh, it's difficult to see someone driving an ARCA car that you might be able to do a little bit better job because of your experience. But it is gratifying to see young kids progress as you're coaching them. That's the most gratifying thing for me. And I've coached a lot of kids throughout the years. Uh, Dylan Moltz is one of them. And he, he does an outstanding job. He comes with an outstanding line of uh, racetracks up here in the Northeast. And uh, hopefully he'll, he'll show more and we'll come back and see us again sometime. And you mentioned uh, trying to expand the, to a second Pocono race. Is it something where if you could get enough funding behind this that you could you could maybe have a rotation of drivers to get exceed time or, or, or maybe a handful of races to develop the, their skills better? We actually offered that to the, the, all the winners. And this, this recent winner, Bear, out of Las Vegas, he came up with a sponsor. They're working on the deal right now. And if we're lucky, we're going to get to run five races with him. And the two Pocono races will be two of the races, so it'll be, it'll be a good challenge. And I, I got an honest shot at, with this young driver, with five races, we could 